Crime authorities today warned that Australia is in the grip of an epidemic of the drug ice, with a massive surge in its supply on our streets. Excuse me, mate. Can you yes. tell me what's going on? Do you know? Um, one guy got murdered, and just before that, they heard a loud scream or something. A manhunt is underway for a 29-year-old wanted over the murder of a St Kilda resident in his apartment block. Detectives say the victim was killed in a brutal targeted attack. What are the chances that it's drug related? Um, very highly, probably yeah. ice. Oh really, why? Because most of the time people get murdered over ice. But Australia is in the grip of an ice pandemic. And of course the drug has been linked to serious violent crime. So this area is dangerous for it then? Yeah, it's highly dangerous. Ice is the purest and strongest form of methamphetamine. Its use has increased in Australia by 300% over the last five years. It's worse than heroin, it's worse than cocaine, it's worse than LSD. It's much more addictive, much more dangerous, much more damaging. I think the police are about to make a statement now. It's a pretty uh, uh, brutal attack. So uh, we're working on the principle that's targeted. A highly addictive drug and a deadly crime on my doorstep. I woke up 90 minutes ago and this is my first morning in Melbourne. And not only do I wake up to Lewisham weather, but I've woken up to this blue lights in the alleyway behind the hotel. And it's a murder. So why are so many Australians addicted to ice? Australia has never faced a drug like ice before. Cheap to produce, highly addictive, and a gateway to chaos and broken lives. That building is called Gatwick House. It's a hostel with a bad reputation, but a good place to start. How you doing? I'm Reggie. Hello. Hello. This is, this is Sis. Gatwick House is run by twin sisters Rose and Yvette. It's really busy. Actually, today's not bad. Yeah, it sounds good. Sorry. Yeah. We very rarely have a room vacant, because this is usually the last resort. What's your name, mate? Yes, sir. How long have you lived here? Yeah, eight months. How big a problem is ice? Really big problem. Maybe, maybe even that's happened, you know? About you killed me because of drug. I'm sure because the road. Many residents are drug addicts, binging on ice in their rooms and then disappearing for days. This is a tiny room, but this is one day's mess. This is one day. Do you not want to be a bit more safe picking up needles? I think that I'm getting used to as well. Is that a regular occurrence for you? Needles, yeah. Yeah. How bad a problem is ice here? Ice is such an epidemic. You use the yeah. word epidemic. Is that justified when it comes to ice? Or I think so, yeah. Is that an exaggeration? No, no, I think it's an epidemic. Have you noticed a change in this business at all as, as the popularity of it has gone up? Yeah. People argue a lot more. And they're becoming much more violent than they ever were before, which makes it harder. Ice can cause violence and psychosis. A new high at the sharp end of drug use, whether snorted, smoked, or injected. Oh my God. Drugs hold a bit of a strange place in my memory and my upbringing, really. I was a kid that never really did anything and never got involved in anything. I say never really did. I've never done anything. I'm not even smoking a cigarette in my life, let alone taking a drug. So, you know, I've never looked down on anybody who uses, but I've struggled to understand it. A quiet suburb of Melbourne. 
the last place you might expect to find an ice addict. I didn't actually have any expectations as to where I'd be turning up to, but I am a little surprised that you know, the sat-nav has brought me to manicured lawns and really pretty little houses and quiet streets. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Reggie. Shani, how you Nice going? to meet you, Shani. Homeless for three months, 23-year-old Shani staying with her aunt Cherie the night before going into rehab. When did you actually start taking drugs? 14. 14. But it was fun then, it's not now. With ice, you know, I started to use it, you know, quite frequently. How much were you taking? At one point I would have been high pretty much 20 hours out of 24, I reckon. In front of me I see a well-kept, well-spoken, articulate young lady. Just looking at you, there are no giveaways. I was a very heavy user and still people couldn't tell. So I could hide it very well. So what's got you to the point of knowing that rehab is where you need to be? Um, I have two babies who are three years old. I became homeless. I had to give my children to my auntie to take care of. And now I just want my family back. You've clearly been a, a rock mm -hmm. for Shani here. Um, but Shani's not actually mentioned mum or dad. Well, Shani and her mum don't talk anymore. And Shani wasn't raised by her dad. Unfortunately, me and my mum have had a pretty rocky relationship since I was young. I grew up in a house where there was addiction too, so I believe that's, you know, part to blame as well. What kind of addiction? A drug addiction and alcohol. That taught me that if I take this, um, I won't feel anything. Shani's addiction has made it difficult to cope with her sons. So Cherie has been looking after them both. But Shani wants them back. I don't believe I would be here if it wasn't for my kids. I wouldn't be here. I would have tried to kill myself or I would have killed myself by now. You already tried once. When? It wasn't all that long ago. A month ago? Because I was homeless. I hadn't seen my kids in so long and seeing them and having to say goodbye to them and knowing that I can't, you know, I'm not the one to put them to bed and I'm not the one to, you know, provide for them. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it's very hard. What do you want for your niece? To get better. I don't want to have to raise her boys. I love them, but I want her to raise them. Do you want to take 10 minutes? I just want to sit outside and just get some fresh air. Yeah. How you doing? I'm Reg. How you going, man? Doing? Shani's friend Dylan has come to wish her good luck. Hello. No stranger to ice, he moved out of Melbourne to get away from the drug and its effects. Shani had like a schizophrenic episode in front of me. I just sort of woke up when that, that happened. You know, it really scared me. And I said, you need to stop or you're going to lose your mind. And need to stop ice? Yeah, everything pretty much. Listen, this might sound like an incredibly strange request, but I'm really interested to see where you might have bought ice from and where you might have done it. I can probably show you, like, places we would use. There are dealers? There are dealers that live along this road, yeah. Apparently. Allegedly. That's crazy to me, because this just looks like the road that your aunt lives on. Did the residents try and shut down the properties or call the police on them? Locals are similarly minded. Right. Do you know what I mean? Supply and demand, they're, they're going to be where the biggest demand is, is the highest concentration. Just went on one of these driveways, really. Just pull into one of these. On your last night before you actually skipped town and moved away, yeah. did you have that one last hit? How about you, Shani? This is your last night before you actually go in to rehab. Do you think you'll smoke tonight? I have um, an ice pipe on me. I would smoke with Shani if she's going to do it and go away tomorrow, and I'm going to do it and go away tomorrow. 
that's justified enough in my head already. Now, I don't understand addiction. I've never taken the drug that you're talking about. But it seems like tonight would be a bad time to take this drug. Am I completely wrong? I understand that you don't understand. But you have to understand that you can't understand. Hmm. Can I see the pipe? There's some brown stuff in there. Is that, is that it? Yeah. So what do you think when you look at this then? Ashamed that that's my addiction. Why is it shame? Why is that the feeling? I ruined my whole family with that. I really did struggle to understand why Dylan or Shani would be tempted to use tonight. It just feels like the worst way to start a journey to recovery. At this stage, I'm not sure if I will ever truly understand addiction, because to understand addiction on some level, you have to have had some sort of experience. I just really hope that she doesn't use tonight. Not everyone addicted to ice has a family to support them. What happened to your shoes? Um, gave them away. Why'd you do that? Didn't need them. <laughs> Why are you so happy? This is my home. <laughs> How long have you lived here? Um, a while now. Yeah? Yeah. 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 What are you on now? Filming with the ice. Yeah. Do you work at the moment? This is my work at Bamaral. Did you not have a job before? Yeah, I used to, used to, yeah. What did you used to do? Cook. I used to cook. And how come you ended up um, stopping work? Needed a change. And what did you change from, from being a cook to? Uh, a professional bum. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, sis. Can you show me your room, Lam? Can I see where you stay? You need a different life. I don't Do your parents know where you are now? I don't have parents. Do you mean you know, have they passed away? What happened, what happened to your folks? No, I just don't have folks. Uh, yeah. You don't have a relationship with them? Yeah, you can say that. that a relationship with them, have parents, yeah. When was the last time you had ice? I went, I went last time I had ice. Today. Did you, did you inject here? Yeah, yeah we injected it. Oh, I see there's your needles there. Yeah. How long do you think you'll stay awake for? Um, three, four days a week. A week? Yeah. So what does it feel like when you take ice? When you whack it up, you feel the, the, the rush, like the, the, the dopamine in your head releases. And you feel that for like probably half an hour or so. Then the ice just like speed, just takes you along the day, yeah. How much do you spend on it? Whatever I got, really, yeah. Do you regret trying it or starting? No, no, no. Why no regrets? Ah, I love it too much. Um, yeah, it's a special drug. <laughs> you almost refer to it as a friend. Yes, it is. My girlfriend. One of my girlfriends. <laughs> and how does your girlfriend treat you? Oh, very well. Yes, very well. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice to meet you, Lam. Thank nice you. you. <laughs> Now, how can you go from being someone with a career and someone with um, a life to, to that? I just don't know how that happens. I've got a few things to tell you about ice. British backpacker Scotty has been staying at Gatwick House for a month. Ice is huge and it's everywhere. I've watched many people, from people who are poor in the slums to people who have um, internet, multinational jobs, try it once and not be able to put the pipe down. Do you really believe that one hit is all that it takes to become hooked? I've seen hooked? it. I've seen it. The results are often unpredictable and sometimes violent. Hoodie was stabbed in a fight over drugs. 
But he stabbed me with a pair of long pair of scissors Lucky in the arm. That's why my arm's blown up, and in the back, I've been stabbed a few times. Yeah, I swear, I appreciate it. So, are you playing this to your friend at the moment? When I was younger, I was a surf lifesaver in Aussie, and I, you know, I do rescue diving and stuff. So I have basic first aid training. Do you mind if I, I wander with you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll give it a quick wash with some soap and water and stuff like that. Now, the, ga the water in the Gatwick is amazing. Really yeah. hot. Mm. And how long have you been using ice for? I was using amphetamines before ice was even in Australia. Australia has strict border controls. It's also far away from the main centres of heroin and cocaine production. Ice has filled the vacuum. It's quick to make, you know. I've seen it made in the backyard in under 10 minutes. Do you think that's part of the problem? That it's so easy to make? Yeah, yes. no, but the part of the problem is the addiction to it. It's so high. And rapid. And yeah, before, well, it's, it's, before it's, you know it, you've had one hit or drink, snort, it doesn't matter how you take it, you stick it up your ass, you're still taking it. Do you use it? I'll just do um, it. I have all I my life, yeah. Energy. I think my defense. Go for a hit before you throw the pools up. Yeah. Right. So you guys were about to use? Yeah. If the cops come, I'll smash them on camera. Don't do that, don't no, 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 no. When was the last time they raided? Oh, and what did they, what did they get? They were looking for a murder. Maybe they yeah. OK, this is ice. So where, where would you buy something like ice from then? Friends, associates, you know what, places. You know I've been really bought drugs upsetting? and sold drugs to police officers. Yeah, I've sold drugs to solicitors, judges, kickboxers, fucking the random mill fucking Joe, your mum, your sister. You, I hate shit. I like it, mate. I'd hate to think my kids were ever um, subject to it. You know, um, if I ever found any of my kids, if I Anyone sold my kids anything, I'd take a pumpy pump action and shoot them in the head point blank. Thank you very much. For it's my pleasure, my darling. I'm a yeah. medic. Let me help you. Yeah. I actually don't quite know what to say off the back of seeing Jasmine News. You know, the first thing that she said after she finished using was that she hates it and she doesn't want her kids to know that she does it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same way about the drug. Because so many people are using it. It's ripping this flipping country apart. really weird. I feel like I'm suddenly in LA. <laughs> this place looks like some of the most expensive streets in Beverly Hills. I mean, look at this place. Look at that. It's where the Fresh Prince grew up, wasn't it? Another Melbourne suburb and home to another young Australian, a former business executive caught in the grip of ice. Brett. Reggie, hey, nice hey. to meet you. Look at this place. Yeah. <laughs> I brought you right in the middle of a refurb show. Four years doing this, yeah. Four years is a long time to renovate a place. Four years is a long time to be living through this. What are these, uh, so what are these medals for? They're all Australian medals. 28-year-old Brett was not just a successful businessman. He also represented his country as a triathlete. That was 2009, world titles. Whoa. Oh my God, is that you? That was me on, yeah, at my drug worst. OK, this looks like a completely different person. So how do you go from the podium to this? I got caught up with ice. How was ice actually introduced to you? A friend of mine in the corporate world, yeah. OK, so were a lot of people in business using? Yeah, 100%. I 
I know with the, I walk through a room of 100 people, I know 100% that there's at least 15 of them that have either been on it, touched it, been involved with it. You can reply to more emails, you get more deals done. I use this as a tool, a tool that took my entire life away. <laughs> You know, we talk back of you looking at me um, at the world titles. I had never touched a drug in my entire life. In fact, I was really critical of people with addictions. So are you still using now? Um, the last time I used was probably three weeks ago. Part of the closure for this, we'll be closing the chapter on this house. This is the place where I resorted to drugs. And so that will always remind me of that. The problem is I struggle to get up. I have no motivation and that drug would get me up and I'd get a bit of work done on the house and I'd do some things and that's where I'm at. I might have kicked the day-to-day -day habit, yeah. but I'm not free of that drug. I do not have control of the addiction. I know I don't. Where the hell are you buying that kind of drug in an area like this? I mean, are you buying it here? Or are you travelling out for, for hours to try and find it somewhere else? Mate, this drug does not discriminate. I could buy it here. I could buy it suburb next door. Or we could travel to areas that are not nice places and buy it. It does not discriminate. What Brett's told me today has scared me. Because at the age of 23, 24, he and I were no different. He did a hell of a lot for himself at quite a young age and he hadn't touched drugs up until that point. And then he made a decision and the rest of his life has gone in a completely different direction. The number of regular ice users in Melbourne has doubled in the past year. There are now 80,000 addicts across the state of Victoria. Hey, dude, you all right? I'm OK, I guess. It's rehab day. Last night when I left you, I felt like that was a good chance that you might have, that you might have used again, did you? I come straight home. So why didn't you fall into the trap of, of using again last night? It defeats the purpose of why I'm doing this, doesn't it, really? No. Yeah. Separated from her kids for 90 days, Shani's having second thoughts. Oh, my God. Cherie, how long we got before we have to leave? I don't want to go to rehab right now. It's nearly time to go, isn't it? Why the fuck is no one listening to me? I said I don't want to fucking go. You're going. Like, I'm not ready to Why fucking go, like, right now. You? What? I don't want this to be filmed because I'm in a shit mood. She's changed her mind about going. Mm. If she doesn't go, I'll never speak to her again, so... You don't mean that, do you? No, I can't be friends with people like that. I have to take away from being like that. I'm, I'm going to get a fucking ice coffee and no one's going to stop me from doing that. Right, I'm not fucking in rehab right now. Listen. So, last night was the reason that the uh, using didn't happen? Well, it did, but I would really like that, that not to be on. To be honest? Just you? No. No, that's just what was left in there. Pardon? Oh, that's just what was left in that thing that she showed her. And did you have it with the chair with both of you? Right. I don't want to cry. I'll wrap my makeup. Oh my god, the... No, 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 I'll remind me. <laughs> Go Let's get some air. You take as long as you need. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
location. This is it. The reality of rehab. Three months away. No family and no drugs. Fuck's sake. Steadily, Shani's crutches are, are falling away one by one. First, it was Dylan this morning, and then it was the pipe. Next, it will be her family. It's going to get very difficult and very real quite quickly, I think. No, Why is she out. in the car? Not coming out. What? She wants to go home. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm almost inclined to say, let's just leave her. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure they'll know how to manage this better yeah. than we ever could. Yeah. Do you want to head inside? You want to go to the car, right? Yeah, but I don't know what to do. I think we should head inside. All right. I just want to be with her and I just want to stay, but I know I can't. Yeah. She's where she's supposed to be. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just being selfish. No, you're not. You're just doing what you've always done, and that is try and be there for her, that's it. Mm -hmm. She's getting around. Come on, let's go and say hello to the community. You've done amazing today. All right, the longer you stay okay. here, the worse it's okay. going to be for you. You should go. My first psychosis, I was in the shower and I, I seen this big, scary, like, demon. I kept on looking, it was coming closer, and it had claws and all, man. And I fucking ran out the bathroom screaming, no clothes on. And then, obviously, after seeing that, I'm like, I'm obviously in some sort of psychosis. You know, what you're describing is, um, you know, about 60% of people who use ice develop some sort of psychotic experience. Ice is very bad for your brain, like it's actually toxic for your brain. People can develop a permanent psychosis. I've been told every time, but I still don't yeah. do it. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I understand, of yeah. course you do. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what people tell us, even though, you know, we can have a psychosis or you've got children that you love, yeah. that's not enough to stop using drugs. No, it's not. As someone who's never taken a drug, let alone been addicted to anything, mm. um, I really am struggling to understand addiction. What I'm thinking as I listen to you ask that question, Reggie, is about trying to think about being in love with someone who's really no good for you, but you love them. You love them. And every time they hold you, it's beautiful. You feel safe and you feel fantastic and you feel, you know, different drugs will have different effects. A heroin addict's just gonna feel warm and safe and relaxed, whereas an ice addict might feel euphoric. But whatever the drug, it gives the individual that feeling of fulfillment. But when we've been hurt, when we're very young, where our capacity to experience love or to trust people in our lives is broken, mm. then, you know, a drug can be very reliable. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! The police swooped in early morning raids. Detectives say they've dismantled a major organised drug syndicate. This syndicate was responsible for flooding the area with ice. More ice is on the streets of Melbourne than ever before. Over the past four years, driving under the influence of drugs has caused more fatalities than alcohol. Have you done a drug test before? No. And we're testing for methamphetamines. The state government of Victoria are spending $17 million on testing 100,000 drivers this year. You're deciding who to flag down, right? Yes. Uh, based on what? Generally, the cars aren't well maintained, but in saying that, you're still getting business people. Yeah. There's a lot out there that you just don't quite realise. One in every 17 drivers randomly stopped the testing positive for ice. Random drug testing tonight. Swipe these bits just down your tongue a couple of times. Yep, one more time. Perfect. 
your oral fluid contains a prescribed illicit drug. I now require you to accompany me to the testing vehicle, which is the bus over there. The police have found traces of ice in his system. He'll lose his license and faces a fine of up to 1,500 pounds. tell whether that helicopter is news or police, but it's definitely over Gatwick House and staying in the area as well. What'd you say, buddy? I'm getting my room. I need to... I could, I could be completely go? wrong, but it feels like the, um, the, uh, the mood in here is completely changed. The police have arrived. They're looking for the murder suspect. Yeah. The uh, police have just come in with a news team. Um, do you oh, know what's happened? a news happened? team? Yeah. I'll have to go and check. OK. All right. Reportedly last seen in the building, on the run for three days. Now the police are here on this floor. There's blood on the wall. Still breathing. It's fresh. You got a documentary or something? Yeah, we're from the UK. Yeah. Oh, mate. I think they might be putting him in the car. Definitely got him. I can't believe he's literally an axe murderer in this building. The suspect is an ice addict with a history of drug related charges. Just a few miles and a world away from Gatwick House. Brett has decided to check into rehab in the city of Geelong. Last time I was in Geelong, I was racing the Australian titles. Really? Yeah. I was happy. I was, in, I, was, I was in a really good place last time I was coming out here to race. In three months' time, you might be the happiest you've ever been. I hope so. I will not bring any drugs or paraphernalia onto the premises, nor will I be under the influence of any narcotic. To permit a search of all belongings prior to entry and upon any re-entry. So this is the contraband I pulled out. So it's things like iPad, your hard drive. And no cologne. No cologne, yeah. No cologne. Al alcohol content. Oh, is wow. High. Yeah. I will comply with medical exams as required. I would adhere to all curfew lights out. All right, this is you, man. How often do you find people withdraw just to their rooms? Quite often. Yeah. The guys will try to pull you out because it's yep. all about the therapeutic community and talking to each other. It is my responsibility to attend all counselling sessions and to comply with all aspects of the program. Which poison? Ice. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like most of us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> just, just out of interest, who, who's come here because of ice? It's a lot of you. What is it about ice that has affected so many of you? It just, it really takes you, like, everyone has different stories, yeah, but it all comes down to, like, the same thing. Like, we just want to get out of ourselves if we feel uncomfortable with anxiety or depression. We just, we don't want to feel these feelings. And is that why ice is such a popular drug, do you think? Because it nullifies your emotions? Yeah. It just pushes all those emotions and feelings to the back of your head, but then once you actually become clean, they, they come rushing forward twice as hard. I just took a lot from me. I Nothing like a devil man. Like I lose my conscience, you know, and I do things I wouldn't do yeah, normally, man. When you're nice, yeah. Like yeah, I would have psychotic rages. Uh, like I, I suffered from ice for a lot of years, and it wasn't until the end I got into psychosis. Three weeks before I come in, here, I started hearing voices, and yeah, like, but I knew it was because of the drugs. Are you prepared to deal with some of your deepest and darkest? Um. 
to uncover what it is that you've been running from. Are you ready to do that? I, I don't know what I'm ready for at the minute. Like, I, I really don't know. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Pleasure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. A standard treatment is three months. Detox for the first 10 days before therapy and counselling begins. Denial is often the biggest problem. You're clearly trying to find the right way to deal with this. All these guys are here just purely to have gotten off the drug. And I've gotten off the drug myself. That part of it's out of the way, so maybe I'm already at my 90 days and like a bit of that's going through my head. Do you think you shouldn't be here? No, I don't. I, th I, I know I need to be here in the sense to what my problem was. I'm just a hesitant was. in... Why would you describe it as past tense? I'm not sure. I'm leaving Brett on his first night and I'm honestly a bit concerned about it because it was pretty much decided that he doesn't need to be there to the extent of some of these other men. And 90 days is a hell of a long time when you're sure that you shouldn't be there for, for 10, for a week. I just don't know if he's going to last. It's been a week, and Shani's detox is almost over. How you doing, Shani? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. One of these. How you doing, baby? All right. Oh, Hello. Good. How's new girl getting on? Missing her babies, of course. Yeah. Mm. But she's doing real well. Well, the, the first week is always about detox, right? How yeah. you felt coming off of what you took before you came in? I slept through it, so I didn't really feel um, coming off it. But for the first time, I feel like a weight lifted off my shoulders because I'm not looking for my next hit. And I'm starting to now feel that missing piece of me, which is my children, which I didn't feel because I numbed that with using ice and I'm starting to feel guilty. I grew up with addiction and I feel as if I was doing exactly what, you know, I grew up with. It, it's everything I'm against. Then where does that leave you when you think about um, Shireen? Because she's tried so hard to help you. I, and um, she's done everything that she can to help you and it was really difficult to see her leave and, you know, she just had to walk away. Uh, how, how do you feel about your relationship with her? Without my auntie, I wouldn't be here and my children would be suffering just like I suffered as a child. That's all I aspire to be in life is half the mother she is. She is the best person I will ever meet. Wow, I'm sure she'd love to hear you say that. Do you know that Reggie has never had a cigarette, he's never tried a drug, he's never had a drink, n never done any of that? That is awesome. It's I, weird. I it's weird, but it's cool. Were you never tempted? Well, no, because I've always That's felt that it's a choice. I genuinely came to, to the table believing that, yes. that, you know, you can say yes or no and that's it. But in, in talking to lots of different people, it feels as though trauma plays a huge part. That's a massive part of our recovery. It's getting down to those core reasons why you we You disagree? I don't disagree, I agree, but my problem was I was a party animal. I didn't have trauma. I just loved to have fun. So I definitely agree. Yeah. But I think 80% is something that has shaped somebody's life in some way. But then I think 20% is a stupid choice. Where's your room? Uh, my room's down here. This is what Dylan gave me before I come in. Nice. So I sleep with it every night. You're yeah. doing really well. Believe it or not, you've been a motivation. I've never met anybody that's never used anything before. And um, you should be really proud of yourself. <laughs> you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> Some people might say I'm a control freak because I live my life a certain way and because I like things done a certain way and you know my house is always a certain way. Blah, 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 blah. No, but me not wanting to take drugs isn't about me being scared of losing control. It's actually about something very different. I started in television when I was eight years old. So before I was even in secondary school, I was being told by my mother 
that I have more to lose than my mates. So, you know, I didn't want it to become the thing that prevented me from my dream, which 25 years later is this. So I've always had that niggling voice in the back of my head and I'm really happy I've had it. Ice-related crimes have doubled in Melbourne in the past year. Many committed by young addicts who have lost control of their lives. So has there been a change then in what you've seen on the streets since ice became such a popular drug? We've seen an increase with the, um, I suppose, the crime associated with that, and sometimes violent crime because of the way the drug makes them behave, or because they want to fund their habit, just don't know what you're going to get. Just five minutes into another shift with the police, and a call comes in. It appears as though the vehicle is listed as being stolen. Whether it is stolen or not, we'll find out. Which car is it? Is it the white one? Yeah, that's in there. I'll just get you to hang five in the car for a minute. I'll give you a nod if you can come out. Phone off, buddy, now. All right, mate, you, you just sit over there, my filmy. No way, that's, so that's lamb from Gatwick House. So just sit there. So what brings you to this area? Go for a drive. Go for a drive? Yeah. Who does this car belong to, do you? One of these guys. Which one? I don't know. Okay, because this car's coming up like you know one stolen vehicle. Love you, you guys! Are you using at the moment? Yeah. What are you using? I sell one marijuana. You're working at the moment? No. No? So where are you getting your money? From friends. No, you're not running yeah. around stealing Maybe stuff no. to finance your drug no, habit? No. no. no? Stand up for us and we'll have a quick search. You got no yeah. sharps on you? No. no. Why are you so jittery? You're shaking. Am mm -hmm. Yeah. Your arms are uncontrolled. Oh, okay. What are you so nervous about? No. Come and grab a seat here in the gutter for us. Yeah. Hey. How you doing? Hello. Hello. I didn't think I'd see you again here <laughs> in this situation. Yeah. So how do you know these guys? Uh, friends from the Gatwick. Do you think that the Gatwick is the, the right place for you, considering that your friends have, yeah. have brought you here? It's very family orientated there. Pretty much yeah, everyone's pretty much family like to meet there. You still seem just as happy as you were. Uh, yeah, as always, you've always been. Much happy, yeah. Why is that? Maybe I love life. <laughs> okay. We'll look after yourself. All right, no worries, Reggie. Take care. See you, buddy. I think you're saying we're going to be in the evidence in court to understand. Fuck, ever! Fucking name is over and die! How did you meet up with these guys? power tools that indicate either burglaries or theft from other cars. Yeah. Um, and how often are you seeing this then? Ice oh, related crime? Every day. Like, every day. Drug addicts will steal to support their habit. Mm. So it's a sign. They're all going to jail now. Because that car's stolen. And it seems like crimes are being committed because of this drug. Well, it doesn't seem like. It's a, it's a fact. It's what's happening. It's my last day in Melbourne. So, is Brett still in rehab? Um, there seems to be quite a few empty rooms at the minute. Here's Hello? Brett. Hello. Hi. I actually, being really honest, didn't think I'd find you here today. Really? Yeah. Really? You seem pretty much adamant that this wasn't where you needed to be. Yeah. Has that changed now? Yeah. You know, a big part of coming in here, as we spoke about, was finding out what I was running away from. 
Um, do you feel closer to that now? 100%, yeah. Well, what, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm interested. What do you think it is that you've discovered in just the three days? Everything in life, I'd just been trying to achieve. Nothing was enough. It didn't matter what race, it didn't matter what achievement, nothing was enough. Why is that insecurity within me to have not, why was it never quite enough? I mean, it's amazing that you feel as strongly as you do after three days, because it is really the beginning of your journey. All right, guys, take care. Stay to the end, please. Yeah, I will. <laughs> You look lovely. What are you up to? I'm doing some colouring in. I'm getting in touch with my creative side. Yeah. <laughs> it looks quite therapeutic, though. It is, because you're thinking about nothing. Though. You're thinking about what colour you're going to use next. My auntie's coming. I know that Shrey's coming. So I'm really excited. Yeah? Yeah. It's good. It's visiting day for Shani. In nine days for you to turn around this much mm. really makes me excited about what might happen. Go on. <laughs> I don't think there's anything bad to say about that woman. Just that she's the best. I can't wait for you to meet her. Oh, my God. It's like someone just had Christmas morning when they saw you. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Good, thanks. Right? Good, yes. This is my beautiful auntie. Hello. <laughs> well done. Thank you so much for everything. Well done. Come on now. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I have a man problem. <laughs> It's been a pleasure, right? Stay in touch. Bye. Bye bye. I've heard addiction doesn't discriminate, but to actually see people like Brett, like Shani, right the way through to the um, the guys at Gatwick House, all suffering from addiction to the same drug. I don't know, it opens up the idea that this drug or addiction full stop can land in anybody's lap.